Ethiopia is on the rise with a GDP of $108 billion and growing. This makes it the sixth largest economy in all of Africa. So naturally, it now hosts several high-profile billionaires and a luxury lifestyle all its own. Who is the richest man in Ethiopia? That would be the legendary businessman, philanthropist, and controversial public figure, Muhammad al Amudi. He's been reported to be worth a truly awe-inspiring $6.3 billion. That money has largely been built on highly lucrative real estate ventures. After increasing his fortune significantly into the tens of billions, he decided to invest in oil refineries in Sweden and Morocco. His work in Ethiopia has earned him the title as the biggest investor in the entire country. Even in Sweden, he's become one of their biggest investors. Currently, the wealthy in Ethiopia are working to change the way the country is viewed internationally. For many people around the globe, it is still thought of as an impoverished nation. While the second most populous country in Africa, with around 500 million people, it is still one of the poorest on the continent. That may be starting to change, though. For years, it has actually been the fastest growing economy in the area. Even though Amudi is controversial due to being so wealthy in a part of the world with a per capita gross national income of $890, he has spent a significant amount of his wealth in trying to change the area for the better. His philanthropy has gained him international recognition many times over. He has spent his career dropping millions upon millions into his home's education, healthcare, infrastructure, and many, many local businesses. It appears as if he is a big supporter of future technologies as well. Every billionaire has to be a futurist nowadays. While Elon Musk is obsessed with sending us to Mars, Moody thinks smaller, quite a lot smaller actually. In fact, he completely funds the King Abdullah Institute for Nanotechnology at King Saud University. It might not be as flashy as going to Mars, but it could be just as world-changing. As far as passions go, it seems his, like many other billionaires all over the world, are centered around the sport of football. He is a major investor in the Council for East and Central Africa Football Associations, otherwise known as CECAFA. In 2005 and 2006, the CECAFA Cup was renamed the Alamudi Senior Challenge Cup due to his contributions. In 2017, he even had a stadium dedicated to his name as well. This project cost more than $22 million and took four and a half years to complete. As far as specific teams, he's a big supporter of Ethiopian Premier League St. George SC. He's even gone so far as to completely cover the medical expenses of many of Ethiopia's finest footballers. No billionaire just spends money on sports and philanthropy though, as one would expect. He likes to drop big cash on houses and fancy cars, though there is significantly less reporting on the specifics of his many indulgences as there is for many of his western counterparts. If you need to know whether he's a professional car buyer or a sports car buyer, it does seem as though he's far more interested in a fine Bentley than he is a fast Ferrari. Billionaire Samuel Tafas is known as one of the most popular businessmen in Ethiopia, with only a moody edging him out. His company Sunshine Group promises to bring as much prosperity to Ethiopia as possible. Samuel goes about this in three major ways. The first is his primary business dealings. He is most known as a successful hotel magnet in the area. Since 1983, the investment group has built more than 5,000 residential and commercial properties in Ethiopia. They bring revenues of over $100 million a year and employ thousands of locals. This has made Sunshine one of the largest indigenous companies in Ethiopia. The company's biggest victory was when they were able to build Marriott Executive Apartments in Ethiopia. This was a major score not just because the risk to reward ratio is much better for a company like Marriott, but because the successful venture might bring in similar companies to the area. 
They are already trying to snag a deal with Hilton Worldwide. Who knows what might be next? An Ethiopian Four Seasons? For Sunshine, the sky really is the limit. The second way Samuel invests in Ethiopia is through infrastructure. One of the biggest problems in the country is the state of its roads. Sunshine has spent a great deal of money to fix and build new roads to keep travelers and, more importantly, businesses safely on the pavement. Sunshine also invests heavily in schools, fully funding several in low-income areas. They also fund higher education opportunities and invest in local businesses. The final contribution Sunshine is moving towards is energy. Billionaires do love to ride the coolest waves of the future, and he is no exception. He is actively working towards bringing more and more clean energy to the region, such as solar power. This matches similar strategies in other African countries, trying to modernize to change the narrative that they are far behind the times. This trend is primarily seen with the building of so-called future cities. The best known example of this is Akon City, the $6 billion project that wants to create a futuristic African utopia that's been said to be reminiscent of Marvel's Wakanda from the Black Panther series. More conservative ways of doing this are simply changing certain cities across Africa into what's known as smart cities, a phenomenon that aims to create public transportation systems, clean water, green energy, and much, much more in the area. With Samuel's commitment to green energy in Ethiopia, clearly he wants to get in on this trend. He wants to show the world that Ethiopia can be a great place for businesses and tourists alike. He spent a fortune on it already and there's no sign he'll be slowing down anytime soon. Who knows, if Akon City goes well, a sunshine city may be on the way. Joe Mamo is a true rising star as far as Ethiopian-born businessmen go. He has a shrewd business mind that managed to find a huge, lucrative business in one of the most famous cities in the United States. He is a major power player in Washington, D.C. Well, one specific industry of D.C. Joe Mamo moved to North Dakota when he was just 13. His first job was pumping gas in Chicago. Then he decided to buy a gas station for himself that he would run with his brothers. This simple job would lead him to huge amounts of money as he built his company himself. This company, Capital Petroleum, has become a huge success by purchasing gas from oil refiners and then selling it to the operators at gas stations. Except he wanted a piece of the business on the other end of the pump as well. That's why he started buying up gas stations in DC as quickly as he could. There are 112 gas stations in the DC area and 54 of them are owned by Capital Petroleum. This extremely lucrative business has made the company worth over $788 million, though they seem to consider themselves more about buying up real estate in the area than they are about simply picking up gas stations. Then there's the amount of wealth he himself has stirred up for himself. He's said to be worth somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.5 billion, quite a leap from pumping gas for minimum wage. All that might just blow up in his face though, because while the last few years have been good for his business, he himself has been accused of price gouging during the pandemic. It's entirely possible that he might end up losing the DC gas station empire he spent decades setting up, though his secondary venture may save his empire altogether. Part of his success has been from slowly building what he refers to as social capital in the city. He is well known for making huge political contributions that are big even by local DC standards. Mamo and his various companies have contributed nearly $60,000 to DC mayoral and council candidates and another $42,000 to candidates for state and federal offices. Most of that came in 2006 where coincidentally Incidentally, his empire really started picking up speed. His most aggressive way to invest came when he staged a major event for Vincent Orange's mayoral campaign. He had the candidate actually pump gas at one of his gas stations for an unbelievable discount, around $1.99 a gallon. This was said to cost him somewhere in the neighborhood of 
$100,000, and it didn't even score Orange the win. Aside from that, his personal spending seems to be on the low side. He is well known by competitors, colleagues, and the press for having an air of mystique about him. No flashy cars or private jets for a guy like him. He even reportedly lives in a simple ranch-style house right across the street from his mother. There are a ton of similar homes in the area, all of which are only a few hundred thousand. No million dollar mansion, just business 24-7. So what is the lifestyle for the richest Ethiopia has to offer? Well, as you can tell, many billionaires are investing heavily into real estate. That means that the country is building some of the finest resorts to attract businesses and tourists alike. First, we've got the Sheraton Addis. It's currently located in Addis Ababa, one of the most popular cities in Ethiopia. The Sheraton offers luxury amenities such as full spa services, an indoor pool, and its own nightclub called the Gaslight. Everything from the exterior architecture to the interior of both the common areas and the private rooms has a stately aesthetic. Natural light throughout the resort is only partially obscured by flowing curtains. Its effortless class and elegance combined with its reputation for top-of-the-line service are why it's considered one of the finest places to stay in the entire city. As far as how much it costs you to snag a room, you don't exactly have to be a billionaire to cover it. Regular rooms can go for as low as $270 a night, while executive rooms can go for as high as $765 a night. Judging from the reviews, this is a deal well worth the money. If you want the opposite experience, maybe you should consider a stay inside of one of Ethiopia's natural parks. That would be the Bale Mountain Lodge. It is a serene property located in the middle of Bale Mountain National Park. It's an 11 room boutique experience that accommodates families with larger rooms with sitting areas to more adventurous clientele who want to stay in a romantic treehouse that features its own outdoor shower. The lodge is known primarily for its guided tours of the national park and for encouraging research teams in the area. This is an excellent place to observe wildlife ranging from the legendary Ethiopian wolf to several rare species of bird life. Research teams are said to have made several unique finds such as new types of vipers, moths, and butterflies. There are also intense hiking trails that lead you up to the roof of Africa, Africa's highest all-weather road. Of course, once you return to the lodge, there are several different ways to relax. They offer food services with beautifully plated meals. There are also scenic areas that offer a perfect place to read or spend special time with your family by the raging fireplace. In order to get a stay in nature that you'll never forget, all it will cost you is around 90 bucks a night. If you want the best of both worlds though, you might want to try Lima Limo Lodge. This offers the same contemporary hotel treatment from the Sheraton while also offering a chance for you to stay in a national park. This time it's the Simeon Mountains National Park. They also offer guided tours, hikes, and ways to interact with nature. It just presents itself more as a luxury hotel with amazing views, beautiful accommodations, and apparently some truly amazing coffee. This might just be the best of the bunch. This is also a pretty affordable stay too, with rates as low as around $100 a night. Ethiopia really does promise unforgettable stays for unforgettable prices. In Ethiopia, people love going on safaris or expeditions into nature to see some of the finest wildlife on Earth. As you might expect, in order to experience something this incredible, it can cost you a large amount of money. Typical 10-day safaris cost upwards of $6,000 per person. One of the absolute wildest ways to enjoy the natural splendor of Ethiopia is by feeding the hyenas of Harar. While that might sound like a dangerous idea by itself, the way they feed them is definitely extreme. You can literally hold a piece of meat in your teeth only for the hyena to eat it 
right out of your mouth. Definitely not for the faint of heart. Some of these intense tours offer even more extreme options, even when you're sleeping. A tour of the Donakil Depression features a truly unique night of sleep, if one is able to actually fall asleep, that is. There you can actually camp out on the Erta Ale Volcano for the night. This is a very active volcano, so it might be the scariest night's sleep money can buy in Ethiopia. Of course, if we're looking at the lives of the rich, we sometimes see the darker side of these kinds of businesses. While most safaris offer you a chance to simply see the wild animals for huge prices, you could get a chance to actually hunt them yourself. Getting one of these trophies costs thousands of dollars. Specifically, a lioness will cost over $9,000, while a male lion will cost over thirty-five grand. Then there's what people do after they score their trophy. Getting a fallen lion stuffed is no small expenditure. It can cost upwards of $8,000. While this is a controversial practice, it is attracting more and more wealthy hunters who all want to apparently take the same exact kind of lion selfie that will definitely not age well on Facebook. No one on the internet is quite over the time a dentist took out Cecil the lion, so this one might not be worth the trouble. If there's one thing Ethiopia is really, really known for, it's the unbelievable coffee one can buy there. By all accounts, the area is a coffee drinker's paradise. It's only fair considering Ethiopia's history with the coffee bean. It's widely believed that Ethiopia is actually the birthplace of coffee itself, that it's the only area where the coffee bean grew natively. Legend has it there was a goat herder who discovered it after noticing his goats would act incredibly hyper after consuming the beans. Those crazy goats ended up giving the area an industry that reportedly makes over $900 million every year. Ethiopian coffee is apparently sweeter and more robust than pretty much anywhere else in the world, so naturally, some of them are pretty expensive. For instance, the legendary Geisha Company originated in Ethiopia. They then took their business and beans to Panama where they truly hit it big. A simple pound of this stuff has gone for well over $1,000 before. It's kind of like the black truffle of coffee. Not all Ethiopian coffee is quite that expensive, though. Organic Ethiopian Yergachev, which features hints of tangerine and lime, goes for upwards of $300 for one five-pound bag. There are variations on it with the darker beans that are slightly cheaper at over $200 a bag. And people say Starbucks is expensive. If you would expect a normal cup of coffee to cost that much if you're actually in Ethiopia, prepare to be surprised. After the conversion rate, on average, you could get a cup of the finest coffee in the world for under a dollar. Cost of living in Ethiopia is said to be around 33.92% lower than a country like the United States, so now would be a great time to make a move before they start building up those future cities.